Hi, and welcome to, or back to, my channel. I'm Kit, and here we talk about the harmful beliefs and ideas that come from religion, red pill, and so on. And today we're going to watch an episode of Piers Morgan Uncensored that features red pill YouTuber Just Pearly Things, trad wife influencer SD Williams, and socialist and author Grace Blakely. I think we're all familiar with Pearl and SD, but I've never heard of Grace before, so I looked her up, and apparently she has a master's degree in African studies and has published three books. And as I was reading, reading her Wikipedia page, I started wondering why Pearl is there, and then I realized she's there because she has no problem making outlandish statements, and she doesn't care when called out for having no sources to back up her claims. Controversy means views, which means money, and that is why people have Pearl on. And I do believe that ignoring her as her channel grew is why she's now going mainstream. At a certain level, yes, ignore people with harmful beliefs, but if they're beginning to catch on and grow, it's vital to push back on what they're saying. As for what this particular video is about, well, they call it a debate, and I'm not entirely sure what they're meant to be debating. There's a question on the screen, is being a traditional wife anti-feminist, which is never asked or answered answered. But since I'm here, I'll go ahead and answer it. Yes, being a trad wife is anti-feminist. How is this even a question? Being anti-feminist is one of their things, along with white supremacy and female submission. I think they're trying to do a, is it anti-feminist for a woman to be a housewife, but you can't compare the two. Housewife and trad wife are not one and the same, though I do see the finagling they're trying to do to make it seem as though if someone objects to a trad wife, they're objecting to housewives. And for anyone wondering what on earth I'm talking about, please see the description box for more information about the trad movement. Back to the video, Piers opens with, of course, a TikTok, and I just want to say I'm so tired of TikTok. Every single person on this earth has an opinion, and that has always been true. And now, thanks to social media, we have access to nearly every single person's opinions, and people take it way too seriously. Yes, if someone is advocating for harming others, by all means, take that seriously. But this? Really? Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know any of these people, and these are my thoughts and opinions. That being said, thank you for joining me, and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Model Emily Radachowski, one of my favorite dimwits, sparked controversy recently by claiming that getting divorced before 30 chic. So it seems that a lot of ladies are getting divorced before they turn 30. And as someone who got married at 26, has been separated for a little over a year, 32, I don't think there's anything better. If there is nothing better than being in your 30s, still being hot, maybe having a little bit of your own money, figuring out what you want to do with your life. For all of those people who are stressed or feeling stressed, about that, about being divorced, like it's a, it's, it's good. Congratulations. It's like congratulations. God, she's ridiculous. A model made a TikTok to assure women that being divorced before thirty isn't the worst thing ever, and that makes her a ridiculous dimwit. Is Piers aware that he has been divorced? Also, where in that did she claim that divorce was chic? Uh, well, divorce is certainly becoming more common. The divorce rate has been declining since 1980. And marriage itself is becoming a fierce frontier in the raging culture wars. On the one side, there are feminists rejecting a dated concept. The majority of people still marry, including feminists. I am an outlier, and it's not because I think marriage is a dated concept. On the other, so-called trad wives who think it binds our societies together. The opposite of feminist is not trad wife. Well, trad wives spend their days duty yeah. cooking and cleaning while their husbands go to work. Uh, Esther Williams, she's a 25-year-old trad wife. I would be willing to bet that Piers has no idea what a trad wife is and is wondering why he can't just say housewife. Has amassed hundreds of thousands of followers by showing off her trad wife life online. She even gave up a job to be the perfect wife. Did she, though? From one of her reels, it looks like Esty's career goal was to be on TV. And she's appeared on shows like Piers Morgan and Michael Knowles and has also been interviewed multiple times. She might not be getting paid for any of this, but I don't think she gave up her career goal. She just tweaked it a bit. So is she and others like her saving society? Or are they selling out the system? Given what we know about the trad movement and white supremacy, this are they saving society strikes me as... Well, I assumed Piers and whoever works on his show don't know much about the trad movement, but I'm starting to wonder. Well, joining me now is traditional wife and influencer Esther Williams, 
And in the studio, the socialist author Grace Blakely and YouTuber Pearl Davis. This might be the best lineup in the history <laughs> of television for a, a debate of this nature. So I'm very excited. It could have been an interesting debate if they actually asked Esty about what differentiates a trad wife from a housewife. I doubt she would have been honest, but it probably would have been better than what we got. Anyway, Pierce tells Esty to sell it to him and asks why she thinks we should all go back to having trad wives, and her response is very diplomatic. Um, well, I believe that... Well, I actually don't believe that everyone should be a traditional wife. I think that it is a choice, and I think it's a lovely choice if a woman wants to simply be a wife and a mother, and that's enough for her. And it's it's a simple way of living with traditional gender rules. Um, it's balanced, and we don't have to do it all as women. I think we've proven that um, it's possible, but... At what cost, right? It's possible that Esty doesn't think everyone needs to embrace traditional gender roles, but she chose to become a trad wife influencer. Not a housewife, but a trad wife, and not just a trad wife, but a trad wife influencer. And that makes me doubt her honesty. But that is for an upcoming video. Anyway, Piers asks Esty what she thinks it means to be a trad wife. Well, to adhere to traditional gender roles. So what I mean by that is the husband, he is the provider, of the home, he goes out, he works, and he 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 knows how to protect his family if need be. And the wife, she's the homemaker. She does the cooking, she does the cleaning, and she takes care of the home and children if there are any, and um, herself, of course. <laughs> so that's it's adhering to traditional gender roles. Esty didn't mention the white supremacy, which I suppose isn't surprising, but she also didn't mention the submission. However, on screen it says, Esty, I'm happy to be subservient to my husband. You can gender role your marriage without the wife having to be subservient, so why can't we talk about why Esty believes she needs to submit instead of this surface level chat about traditional gender roles? Grace, I'm sure you thoroughly agree with this, eh? <laughs> Look, I mean, what, um, what Esty's just said about the fact that women should be able to choose, obviously I completely agree. And, you know, men should be able to choose as well. I think the feminist critique of traditional gender roles and gender ideology isn't that some people like to stay at home and others don't. It's that you shouldn't be bound to pursue a certain life based on the sex that you were born into at birth. Someone asked what I thought of the feminist in this video, and I noticed the comments on it fall into three categories fawning over Esty, agreeing with Pearl, or insulting Grace. How very surprising. The one issue I do have is, I know actually um, someone, a friend of mine, whose sister got, got involved in the trad wife movement in the US, basically. Um, she was quite young. She got married to someone who was like, this is what we're doing. You're going to be a trad wife. And basically came to regret it. Um, she felt like she'd been controlled, like her life became very small and she couldn't get out. She couldn't escape because, you know, she'd lost all her friends and, and this has become basically her entire life. And it concerns me uh, that sometimes we see this narrative on social media that women have to be a certain way in order to get a husband. Um, so you have to be this like particular model of femininity for people to love you. And I think that's really sad because I don't think anyone should have to shave off any parts of themselves to be loved or to, to you know, find a husband or, you know, anything like that. I would have left off the anecdote, but I agree. What did she say that was wrong? All right, Pearl, oh, what do you think? Um, I think it's I, I think it's a good that we're seeing a return to traditionalism. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. How <laughs> I don't know. How has the feminist movement of the last few decades how has it gone for you? And when you look at it and see how women have progressed, do you think it's been largely a force for good? Or do you think as the trad wives do that perhaps we've lost that sense of gender rules, for want of a better phrase, which actually worked very well, well for I mean, One, how are we figuring gender roles worked very well for many people? And two, so people are still free to pursue those gender roles if they want. I mean, we've seen families disappear. You know, um, I saw a study the other day that said only 25% of I mean, this is an American stat, an American household to have families, so. So I did a search for 25% of Americans have families, and the first result was family households are still the majority. While one-person households increased from 25% in 1990 to 28% in 2020, family households remain the largest type of U.S. households, and the majority were married couple households. Again, why is Pearl here? 
Um, I guess there's positives and there's negatives, but it's like at what cost, you know? Well, to uh, you- 80, like 85, um, 150 years ago, the average woman had seven kids, 85% of people were married. 150 years ago was 1873. And this chart is telling me that in the 1870s, the average couple had about four kids. However, the average in 1800 was seven. So we would actually have to go back 223 years. I'm not sure where this 85% of people were married 150 years ago comes from, but it's not difficult to believe that people married more often in the 19th century than in the 21st. Though I would like to see her source for that claim and also why she thinks having seven kids on average is a good thing. Does Pearl really want to go back to the 1800s? Has she thought this through? You know, you know and, also and now, much now, higher infant mortality well, yeah, but, but and women is, die well, very young and, yeah, you know. I mean, women were more depressed than ever before. We're on antidepressants. Um, I mean, there are a lot age, of... Women over the age of 45 are the least happy demographic. There, I'm not buying that conservatives are just so concerned about women's happiness. They're not concerned about anyone's happiness. They want everyone to marry and have kids and they will say whatever they need to to make it happen. Which is why we have Pearl throwing us back to the 1800s. Even though a lot has changed besides marriage and fertility rates, and of course people weren't on antidepressants back then, antidepressants weren't invented until the 1950s. I have a lot more to say about this, but it will keep. There are so, a lot of um, very the issue, the complex issue that, reasons for that. Well, I think and, it's and the issue you have is women like Emily Ratajkowski, you know, marriage, again, I've said this before, marriage isn't marriage anymore. The average marriage is seven years. We have things like no-fault divorce, leave if you're unhappy. So but what if, does that mean, marriage isn't marriage anymore? Because well, there have marriage, been so many marriage marriages be, over the course of history mar- where people have been very unhappy. Either the man or the woman has been very unhappy. And they've been forced basically to stay in a marriage. It could have been an abusive well, marriage. You, it could have been you, an emotionally I mean, abusive well, marriage. marriage was and that would, it was know, about, we have one life. Why would you spend it with again, someone who doesn't marriage, make you happy? Marriage was about duty. And that, this is the problem we have with women. Like women, men tend to be better people than us. Look at that smile. Yeah, they really do. They tend to no, no, no. no. They they tend to do the right oh thing. God. They are no, much men. maligned species. I agree. I mean, there's a reason we have phrases like a man of his word, right? Yeah. It's not a woman of her word. I because just... men, men will actually stick things out. Women, when she gets hard, we just leave. And I'm going to need some sources for these claims. And no, the existence of the phrase "man of his word" isn't a source. You're proving, that, you're proving think, my point. What was, your, what, was your, what was your first answer? My happiness, right? Of course. That, like, Everyone deserves is, to be happy. Family, Everyone deserves family, to be loved. The family doesn't work when it's about you. It's supposed to be about your kids. Well, and that's the, pro- that's the problem in modern society. No, no, no. There's no, a balance no. and, and a compromise and, okay, in do, relationships. Do you think Am I allowed to do that? No. Okay, go go Look, I think relationships are about balance. They're about compromise. They're about knowing and understanding yourself learning to, you know, know and understand another person. Eventually, potentially, if you want to, bringing children into the world and teaching them how to do that as well. Teaching them to balance a sense of their own identity with the love that they have for, for another person. Again, what is she saying that's wrong? And, you know, for example, I know um, a, an older woman, actually, who's a friend of our family, who um, got divorced at about 60. She had, you know, this lovely family. They were together since they were 18. And she said, I got to a point after I'd stopped being a mother and, you know, I was just kind of getting on, I realized I'd lost my sense of who I was. And I didn't really feel like I knew who I was anymore because I'd always just been a wife and a mother. And I wanted to go out and explore that. And I think that's fantastic. what What is traditionalism? I would say traditionalism is about preserving the past or more specifically what we think the past was. So in the US, that would be Pledge of Allegiance, getting married and having kids in your early 20s, going to church every week and the wife staying home and the husband going out to work. Um, I don't know it's, what you think traditionalism I, I would is. Say, I would say a modern mentality is me before the family. I would say traditional traditionalism is the family before me, especially in women. You're and so, and so, and so what I actually, it's interesting you said 60 year olds, cause you know, I've interviewed 600, 700 people roughly in the past year and a half. I've done hundreds of shows interviewing people about relationships. And what I find is the 60 year olds tend to, a lot of those women led their daughters astray. You know, there, there's a reason we're in this mess, right? What mess? A lot of those women had the wrong mentality when it came to marriage and had exactly the mentality that you're talking about. Which where, is the one which to prioritize which, balancing one's own sense of identity with no, compromise no, and relationship it's my, with someone else. myself before the marriage. But that's, again... And, you know, and it's really unfortunate it's because I would here, say actually. the women of our generation really point. are are suffering because of the advice of the women of the past. That's an interesting- that trad girl also posted about how older women shouldn't be listened to because their advice leads women astray. And I would like to know where Pearl thinks that advice came from. Interesting point here, right? Which is that we do live in a very individualistic society. Very true. The reaction to mask mandates was very telling. And we're all told 
actually, I think a lot of the time in our relationships as well, you have to be a certain way if you want to receive love. You have to abide by these uh, these well, norms. Yeah. You have to be a certain level of attractiveness. Men, you have to men, earn a certain amount men. of money. It's all about you. And that's not what love is. And I still see nothing wrong with what Grace is saying. It is a shame that Pierce chose now to interrupt them though. I would have enjoyed seeing Pearl explain how love isn't really needed in marriage and is a modern invention. All right, let me bring in, all right, listen, no, it's no, actually no. been very interesting this interview. So let me bring in back in Esty. So, so Esty, in terms of trad values, like, my wife puts the bins out, for example. Right? I don't. I've never asked her to. She's just adopted that role in our house. So I never put the bins out. I don't know if I should feel ashamed of myself. I do other stuff, but I don't put the bins out. As a trad wife, do you put your bins out? Is that part of the gender rule of the fifties? Is that what used to happen, or is the man supposed to do that? I mean, um, how do these rules work in reality? There is so much to the trad movement, and Piers is asking about who puts out the trash bins. To be honest, it, it has nothing, it, I don't want to say nothing, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the 50s and the 60s, um, especially in our ho household. I, I enjoy the aesthetic, um, and I think that's where people get a little mixed up with my channel, but um, I, well, to answer your question, actually, I, I don't put the trash bins out. My husband does that, mm. but I think we, we have this um, this thing in our household where he does most of the outdoor work. I do all the indoor work. Of course, he works and provides and I'm the homemaker. That's what works for us. I still want to know how Esty is going to ensure her husband doesn't do any childcare, especially if they have more than one kid. But in I relation think, hey, to, I mean, in relation to what, right, in relation to what Pearl's saying, is, is part of a, a sense of being dutiful and having no problem actually with being dutiful in a marriage. I'm pretty sure that even people who don't believe in traditionalism have duties in marriage. Uh, yes, I believe that traditionalism can, it, it is putting um, your family before yourself. And I think it, it is, um, it is having those traditional values that were once definitely more in place in um, God, family and love and we live in a very selfish society now. You know, you see self-love printed everywhere, right? And um, women, I'm speaking of divorce and marriage, m women are leaving marriage far more easy, easier than uh, men. And they are um, doing it because they think there's something better out there for them, that the grass is greener on the other side. And no one leaves a marriage thinking life will be worse afterwards, but I would like to know how she knows it's women leaving a marriage. To hear folks like Pearl tell it, women just up and leave and the man is flabbergasted because he thought they were happy. And their reasoning for this claim tends to be that women initiate divorce more often than men. And though that is true, I'm not buying that men are shocked to learn their wife wants a divorce and the men are willing to do anything to save the marriage. It's the wife that insists on divorce. And it's interesting because they assume that if a woman wants a divorce, it's basically for greener grass or some other frivolous reason. They're finding out that is wrong and they're going through divorce after divorce and um... Now, wait a minute. Women leave their marriage for greener grass and then they keep getting married and then getting divorced? Come on. For one, that's not rational. And for two, no average person has the money for that. I would love to see her source for that claim because I did look up how often does the average woman marry and all I got was the average age of marriage. Divorce stats also don't go beyond third marriage, which leads me to believe that there aren't enough people marrying as a hobby to be statistically worthwhile. You know, marriage is a bond and it's a sacred bond where two become one under God and that's beautiful and you have to protect that at all costs. No one is going to force you to get a divorce. And if it's that important to you, make sure your potential spouse also agrees that divorce is not an option. And I think part of that is putting your partner's needs before your own every single day. And I try and do my best and I think of my husband as much as I can and what will please him and make him happy. I love the sound of this. Sorry, I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, I don't. I, I wouldn't dare to express my opinion. I think that's, you know, a lovely way to think about relationships if it's reciprocal. I agree. It's normal and natural to want to make your partner happy, but you can't be so caught up in your partner's happiness that you forget yourself. And honestly, someone who cares about you 
wouldn't want that. And we, yes. you're talking about you know, about God and, no, and family I mean, and tradition. I, I, this is the How can I women, please women finish keep my score. sentence? Life isn't about I keep thought score. women were supposed to, you know, recognize <laughs> their place and learn not to speak over other people. <laughs> Pearl has a lot of beliefs about how women should be in this world, none of which she follows. Um, no, so <laughs> look, I think it's reciprocated. You talked there about about religion and about Christianity and uh, about self love. You know, uh, the the my kind of most important commandment. There's two most important commandments: love your neighbor as yourself. So that requires a foundation of self-love and respect for oneself and knowledge of one's own identity and what one wants to be able to receive and give the love that you're going to have in a solid and healthy relationship. I think it has to be mutual. I agree. As they say, you can't pour from an empty cup. And again, those you're pouring into should also care about your cup. And that was it. Piers is looking forward to getting them all back in 10 years to see if Pearl and Grace are married yet and if Essie still holds the same beliefs. I'm going to go ahead and say that Grace will do whatever is right for her and Pearl will ride this train as long as she can until she has to get married. And by has to, I mean her audience starts leaving because of the discrepancy between what she says women should do and what she actually does. As for Esty, I think she'll still be married with some kids. I also think she'll stop hosting at some point, either because she'll have become disillusioned with trad life or because there will be no time. I noticed in the comments that people didn't like Grace interrupting Pearl or using anecdotes, and I did wonder if Grace had seen some of Pearl's shows. Pearl frequently interrupts her guests, and she loves using anecdotes to prove her points. But to be honest, I don't like it either. But I'm the type that will wait quietly until a person is finished speaking, and if they just continue speaking, I'll keep waiting until I'm acknowledged, and I don't think that would fly in a debate. Though I'm still not sure what they were debating. And you know, it would have been much more interesting and important to see Pearl explain to Grace why she thinks women shouldn't be able to vote than to find out if Esty or her husband takes out the trash. And yes, it is important that people see this isn't just about wearing pretty clothes or raising children. And Piers, along with people like him, is part of the problem. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.